scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible lets us know that a lazy man who will not sow during the rainy season will beg in the time of harvest. And remember the speaker of this truth is a person of integrity. Even though he used men to speak, the Bible says they spoke as they were inspired of the Spirit. So these are the words of God. That means there is nobody who becomes determined to be lazy who will succeed God's way. You see that? Because he's negating the condition allocated, diligence, among many other spiritual provisions is part of the equation that makes for a life that is blessed, a life of beauty and color. Very, very powerful. When people had delays or when people had losses in their lives, according to scripture, it took the ministry of the prophetic to bring them out of it. So every time people face unfavorable situations, whether it was the axe head, whether it was the debtors coming to carry the children of the, the wife of the late prophet, anything that had to do with restoration was allocated to the ministry of the prophetic. So if you search in scripture and the Bible says, I will restore to you. So I found out from scripture that the grace of God is able to bring restoration, but that the dynamic of that process is I must understand the principles allocated. So I now know through prayer and God leads me to a man of God, a servant of God that has the unction allocated for my restoration. And then I engage that principle with understanding. And then God is now committed. Please understand this. God's commitment starts when your obedience is done. God's commitment is not, is, it doesn't just come at random. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. God's commitment comes when your obedience is complete. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your, your own obedience is complete. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth, the Bible says. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. So anybody who wants to increase God's way, there, is, there are the spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance, for instance, and one of it is the law of giving. So you cannot withhold and want to increase God's way. You can increase any other way and with it will come a plethora of sorrows. But if you want to increase God's way, is a non-negotiable condition that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. This is very important. Now, believers, listen. Our assignment is to find out the truths that the word of God has made available to us in Christ. And then find out the, the various conditions. Please, please, in the name of Jesus, understand what I'm teaching you. Find out the conditions allocated. Allocated manifestation of these truths. Then you can now obtain grace. Remember, grace as empowerment now. When you find those conditions, your next assignment is not to move in the flesh. Because some of those conditions are very difficult. 
in the flesh you may not be able to walk in keeping with them. So you need to obtain an energizing from God that now empowers you to do. Not every dimension of God's grace does for you. There are certain dimensions of God's grace that empowers you. You do the doing. You, you will do the obeying. But it will not be by the strength of the flesh. Very, very important. So what dimensions, for instance, of spiritual realities do you desire to see in your life? For instance, I desire greater anointing. I desire greater power. I want to be able to host a very magnificent dimension of God's anointing for territories and nations. Wonderful. Is that possible in Christ? Yes. Does the grace of God allow for that provision? Absolutely. Where do I find it in scripture? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. So I know that God can anoint with the Holy Ghost and with power. And a man on the strength of that anointing can go about doing good, healing all who are oppressed. And I desire that grace. It is true in Christ. The Father wants to release it without measure to me. But there are conditions. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. There are conditions. The anointing will not just come upon you just because you are a Christian. There is the measure of anointing that comes by reason of being grafted into Christ. But that is not the kind of anointing that will shake territories. Anointing is in levels. The Bible says to grow in grace. So I now find out the conditions and then I begin to pray and search through scripture. And remember, Jesus is our pattern man. So I go to the life of Jesus and I now begin to search how was he empowered because he came as a man. And the Bible lets us know that had he been baptized of John, the Bible says the Holy Spirit drove him to the wilderness. And he was there praying and fasting 40 days. No food, no water. It doesn't necessarily mean to religiously fast for 40 days. The Holy Ghost, remember, is the one who directs you. But it then tells you that the ministry of prayer and fasting is part of the equation for power. It is non-negotiable. It's not an Old Testament concept. It's not a New Testament concept. Anybody who desires to walk in spiritual power cannot ignore the ministry of prayer and fasting. While they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost spoke to them. So I desire to hear God clearer. I desire to hear the voice of God with clarity and power. While they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost spoke to them. So there is a dimension of prayer and fasting that can take away the haziness in hearing God. Many believers desire certain many kinds of results as far as the manifestation of the grace of God is concerned. But I think the missing link for all of us, most of us, is not necessarily the awareness of the existence of those provisions. Whether it is breakthrough, prosperity, increase, speed, restoration, they are all in Christ. The Bible has shown us that these things are in Christ. It calls them all spiritual blessings. They are in heavenly places and reside with the Christ. But then to understand the participatory conditions, the conditions allocated for the manifestation of these spiritual realities as a way of making the grace of God manifest. This is where a lot of believers do not um, understand. A pastor may be watching, for instance, and you are saying, Apostle, um, I, I desire my church to grow. I desire my ministry to expand. I desire to step into unusual dimensions of grace. And while that is happening, um, you may not understand that while all of that is happening, God desires for you to grow. He desires increase for you. But he's unable to bring that in because um, you have not been able to understand the condition that makes for that increase. One of it, for instance, is if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. So if Christ is not being lifted up, then all men cannot be drawn to him. This is very, very important. Christ has to be lifted up for all men to be drawn. If self is lifted up, if religious agenda is lifted up, if church is lifted up, then Christ cannot be revealed. Hallelujah. 
This is very, very important. So your conviction and then the actions of obedience and then you back it up with patience. I don't have the time would have gone to examine the life of the pet because the Bible lets us know that we should look unto Abraham, Isaiah 51 from verse 1 and 2. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, that body, I called him and I blessed him. That means understudy Abraham as my idea of faith. Understudy him. Understudy him. So we, you have to take a journey um, through Abraham's life. You have to go to Genesis 15 and find out what God told him. And then you go to Romans from verse 16 to 22. I apologize. We may not be able to go in because of our time. But Romans chapter 4 from verse 16. The Bible begins to tell us Abraham's contemplation. That he counted God worthy even though he saw that Sarah's womb was already dead. He did not, um, um, what do we call it now? He did not see it as a thing to bend away his faith he believed god defied what his optical eyes were seeing this is very powerful he did not consider the deadness of sarah's womb praise the name of the lord so this is very important believers we live in times where there is a need for the manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom in our life. We have a bedeviled world, a world that is attempting to push God out of everywhere. Our sociological sphere, our economic sphere, God, God seems like he's a nuisance to civilization. So it looks like you choose God and remain a failure and a nonentity in life, or you exclude God out of your life and face science or face sociology, then you can have a meaningful life life that's not true god is the creator of the heavens and the earth and his way is the bible said are more superior to the world and i believe that in this going to find men and women translate the riches the vast riches of his grace and make it manifest through faith it is by grace through faith my lifting in the spirit by grace through faith my excelling in life by grace through faith. My prosperity in ministry by grace through faith. My longevity, even in this bedeviled world, by grace, longevity has been provided by grace. But faith makes it manifest. So every dimension, apostle, I desire restoration. The grace of God is able to make it available. The finished work of Christ captures that possibility, but it will take the engaging the faith of the Son of God to make it manifest. Remember, when spiritual realities are not made manifest, we cannot behold them, and Christ will not be glorified that way, and our joy will not be fulfilled, and it will threaten our awareness of the love of the Father. We are going to pray by faith through faith hebrews chapter 11 is an archive of men and women who did exploits in the kingdom mighty things terrible things in righteousness and the bible lets us know that faith was the channel for them to convert and manifest these dimensions of grace very very powerful these dimensions of grace, they came through faith. First Peter 5 and verse 10. We are preparing to pray now. First Peter 5 and verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect establish strengthen and settle you it is the god of all grace that does this the god of all grace 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 the god of all lifting the god of all restoration the god of all establishment the god of all grace that every dimension we desire is possible through the grace of god but it is accessible through his grace, but it is made manifest through faith. 
Grace makes it available. Grace makes it accessible. The consciousness makes it accessible. That knowledge. But then it will take faith to make it manifest in our lives. We are going to pray. We will be praying for the sick. I will be speaking breakthroughs over your life. I am not creating anything new. The word of God has already revealed to us that all I'm going to be praying for is possible in God through Christ and it is available to the saints. The finished work of Christ has made it possible for us to walk in these realities. But it will take faith. Faith, in this case, the action of speaking prophetically based on the fact that I know that the Holy Ghost will back my words and empower those words and cause those words to go through the medium of the airwaves to regions and nations and begin to create supernatural realities in the lives of people. Lift your voice wherever you are in one minute and just begin to talk to the Lord. Whether you're in church, whether in your home, your office, wherever, just lift your voice, begin to talk to the Lord. Father, I believe, I believe, I believe. It is by grace and it is true faith. Now I understand. It is not just by grace alone. Accessible by grace, made manifest through faith. Accessible by grace. You can mention anything at all. My lifting, accessible by grace, but made manifest through faith. My restoration, accessible and available by grace but made manifest through faith. Spiritual empowerment, oh yes. Available and accessible by grace, but made manifest through faith. What is grace? The consciousness of all that is in Christ. All that is in God, routed through the Christ. What is faith? The action I take based on my conviction and in keeping to the principles allocated for the manifestation of that result. That is faith. Faith is not just speaking. Faith is more than confession. Faith is more than just declaration. Faith is more than just believing that God is not a liar. I must find out the conditions allocated from scripture tied to whatever promise I desire to see manifest and then obtain the energizing through God's grace. The second definition of grace, the empowerment that comes on account of that consciousness, that God supplies that supernatural power so that I can now walk in obedience but not by my strength. There are people, for instance, who want to know the Lord more. God wants to reveal himself, but it is going to, stay, it's going to take the labor dimension of faith to study scripture and to expose yourself to the atmosphere of God's presence until the spirit of God begins to reveal Jesus. And that takes time. It takes time to sit in one place and study the Bible for two, three, four, five, six hours. It takes time to dedicate a whole day seated in one place. You do not have the human power to do that. But then his grace comes upon you as an energizing so that you are going to do the studying that reveals Jesus to you. But it's not just going to be by your power. How will you know it's not by your power? You will do unusual things that not everybody can do. Giving, it takes that energizing. Nobody will just commit significant seeds into the, the, the work of the kingdom just like that. No, it takes an energizing of the spirit. So we are going to pray. Father, I believe. That is the first prayer. Father, I believe. I believe. I believe in you. I believe in Jesus, the Christ of God. You are a God of integrity and you are El Shaddai, the all-powerful, multi-breasted one. Lift your voice and pray. Everything that represents unbelief, that has 
has made me doubt your integrity, has made me doubt your ability. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I declare that from this conference, I believe, I believe, I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe based on the integrity of God's word. No matter what my situation is saying, no matter what the circumstances are saying, in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, I decree and I declare that I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. God is a God of integrity and God is a God of all ability. You can turn my life around. You can meet my needs. You can see to it that the glory and the beauty of heaven is revealed in and through my life. Go ahead and pray. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Prayer point number two. Lord, bring me to a place of persuasion. The Bible says, but I know whom I have believed. Powerful scripture. It says, and I am persuaded, but I know whom I have believed. I've not just believed. I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed to him against that day. But I know whom I have believed. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, bring me to a place of conviction. I'm tired of thinking I believe this. And then tomorrow I find out that I don't even believe it again. Bring persuasion. Bring conviction. Bring persuasion. I know whom I believe and I am persuaded. Go ahead and pray. Bring conviction to my life. Bring conviction to my Christian experience. Conviction to my Christian experience. In the name of Jesus, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, the Son of the living God. I believe and I am convicted. I am convicted. I'm not hoping to believe. I'm not hoping God will do it. I know he will do it based on his integrity and based on his ability. Prayer point number three, and I want you to pray this from the depth of your heart. Father, reveal to me by scripture and through the ministry of the spirit reveal to me the principles allocated for the results i desire go ahead and pray the principles are located for the results i desire good master what must i do to be saved good master what must i do to be saved i know salvation is there but what are the participatory steps in principle Lift your voice and pray. If it's your finances, Lord, reveal to me what is the principle allocated for seeing the supplies of heaven. If it's your spiritual life, I'd like you to pray. What is the principle allocated from scripture to make me have a robust and a vibrant spiritual life? If it's breakthrough, if it's lifting, if you want to see a greater dimension of the anointing of the Spirit in your life. Father, what is this principle? I know you are able to anoint men. History shows us how you have anointed men and they shook territories with power and grace. Reveal to me the principles from Scripture. Remember the Bible says, everyone that asketh receiveth. He said, he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Ye have not because ye ask not. So go ahead and ask in faith, believing. Lord, I decree and declare, show me the principle. Show me the principle. In the name of Jesus, I want a strong and a vibrant home. I want to raise godly children. That reality is a provision that the grace of God has afforded me in Christ. But reveal to me the participatory principles that I will need to engage. The principles I will need to engage to see to it that this becomes a reality. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Now, for those watching, for those following, I like you by faith. Two things. We have just a few minutes and we're done. This will be my final session. In one minute, I'd like you to mention every area you're trusting God for a miracle. This is a conference. And we cannot end this conference without the manifestation of the power and the grace and the glory of God. I'd like you to open up your mouth and pray. I'd like you to declare by the Spirit 
Declare by the Spirit, declare by the supernatural power of God that you are trusting God for a miracle in whatever area. Lift your voice and mention it as you trust God to visit you. I want to pray with you. I want to release my faith with you. Go ahead. Don't let the devil lie to you and make you believe that God is unable to do this. No, 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 no. Believe God. Believe God with all your heart. Believe God with all your heart. Believe God with all your strength. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. 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 You are the do one. You are able. You are able. You are able to do exceeding abundantly above, far above all we ask or think. We believe you. We believe you. Because I want to pray for you now. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Now listen very carefully. There are anointings and there are graces that God has given in the body. And these graces are for the lifting the deliverance, the emancipation of many. I believe by the Spirit of God that the Lord led your father and your pastor to just allow me come and minister to the body of believers because there is a dimension of that grace that God wants to release upon your life. And I want you to believe it. The prophetic is very powerful. And if and when ministered within the boundary of its relevance, it can produce wonders in the life of believers. I do not want to end this session without speaking over your life. Do not get used to pain. Do not get used to tragedy. There is always a way out. Remember, it is by grace and through faith. As far as receiving this prayer is concerned, you've done your own part. You have come to church or you've connected online. Your own part is done. Now it is my own part in the name of Jesus to pray for you. And I want you to believe God. And believe to expect miraculous testimonies. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. The members of this great assembly, global. And then I pray for all those who are connecting and watching online. In the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God. You have anointed me to bring liberty, to bring deliverance, to open up closed doors. I declare, O oh God, that you honor every prophetic word that comes out from my lips. I speak over your life in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare that everything that stands as an embargo, stands as a limitation, stands as a resistance, in the name of Jesus and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I declare it is cleared out of the way. I prophesy favor upon your life. I speak favor. Let it mantle you and let the results show. Let favor mantle you according to Exodus chapter 3. Let it mantle you according to Esther in the name of Jesus Christ chapter 2 and verse 15. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will obtain favor in the eyes of everyone who sees you. And according to Exodus 3.21, you will not go empty. I, I, I end the days of emptiness in your hands, spiritually, financially, and so on. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your spiritual life. I release angelic encounters. I declare for many of you who have lost touch with spiritual things, your hunger your drive for the things of the spirit have gone down in the name of jesus i fan your life to flames i fan your passion for the word i fan your passion for prayer i find your passion for fasting i find your passion for fellowship in the name of jesus i plant in you the spiritual discipline to continue to press until you become a mighty man a mighty woman in the spirit in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will continue to increase you. He will bless you. He will bless all those who are connected to your household in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone who is sick in the body, I pray for you right now. No matter what the condition is, I release the healing power that the grace of God affords. I declare that the healing power and the life of Jesus will surge through your body and quicken you right now. I bring to end terminal diseases. I cause everything that wants to destroy you. I prophesy longevity, 
I speak health, I speak vitality to your body. In the name of Jesus, as a result of this conference, I join my faith with every man and every woman who has ministered. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I release you into the next dimension of your life, spiritually, economically, in the name of Jesus. That even at times when men are saying there is a casting down, I prophesy to you that for you it will be that there is a lifting up. The hand of God is strong upon your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare that that all who walk against the counsel of God in your life, they go down in the name of Jesus. Every arsenal of darkness against your life, in the name of Jesus, let it be broken. Every orchestration that is tied to foundations, tied to bloodlines, tied to, to, to activities of ancestry, I come against it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed this to his cross. In the name of Jesus and by the ministry of the blood we declare that you are free forever from every yoke of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ and I lend my voice with the voice of our father your pastor to declare that this church and this assembly and all who are connected to the grace of Dr. Joda I speak to you rise from one dimension to the other may the grace of God speak for you ministry will work for you souls will continue to be saved through your lives lives and destinies will continue to be transformed God will raise helpers God will raise all who love God and love you and love what you are involved with in the name of Jesus I speak ease to your life in the name of Jesus Christ I fan your prayer life to flames in the name of Jesus no more spiritual lukewarmness no excuses in the name of Jesus may the Lord bless you may the Lord increase you in the name of Jesus and finally I want to truly appreciate Dr. Joda thank you so much sir and your wife the entire leadership of this great assembly I thank you so much for the privilege to have been a blessing and I pray in the name of Jesus that testimonies will come from this conference and that the name of the Lord will forever be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Shalom. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.